Welcome back. Well, as you know, last week saw the death of one of the most flamboyant and popular figures in uh, rock music, Freddie Mercury, lead singer with Queen. He led the group to international success, thrilled fans as well with his exciting stage performances. Joining us in the studio now to pay tribute, maybe to reflect on Freddie's memory for the first time, are two of the band members, guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor. Thanks for coming, and we do appreciate you coming. Thanks, Mike. If we can just ask, just to ask a couple of questions first. How long did Freddie know that he was suffering from AIDS, full-blown AIDS? I don't think that's a question we can answer mm. because we don't actually know ourselves. It was always a very private thing with him. Mm. Um, we knew for a, a you know. A, I guess we knew intuitively something was going on, but it wasn't talked about. He didn't officially tell us until just a, a few months before he went. Mm. But certainly he knew for five years or so or more, so he was living under the shadow for a very, very long time. He was time. living under the shadow. And what did yeah. it do, as far as you could see it and tell? Because in many ways he's a very private man, that's the irony of it, isn't it? But as far as yes. you could see, what, what did it do to him, the, the knowledge that he was... Well, the one thing he wanted to do was keep on working in, in the studio. Um, he was absolutely uh, uh, determined to keep on keep the group the group going and mm. to keep working, and that that actually kept him going. You see, uh, we for a long earlier, time. We watched earlier those are the days of our lives, and actually yeah. watching it was unbearably poignant just to watch it. So for you fellows to be in that, it must have been a difficult session emotionally. It's incredibly difficult. Yes, it, it 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 was hard. It was really, but we mm. were sort of trying to support him through it. Mm. And, uh, and he was incredibly brave at, at, at that uh, mm. time. Ob obviously, he knew, you know, and, and we all knew uh, at, at that time. Uh, and, uh, mm. But, you know, the, the best thing is just to get on with life mm. uh, and to do it. And, and he did that. And I, th I think he, he carried on very bravely, actually. Mm. Now, one of the principal reasons you're here, and we're grateful for you coming in, the commentators have all had their say, haven't they? All, everybody's become instant experts on the life and past of... Uh, Freddie Mercury, be they in the papers or be they on television, the content. Where did they go wrong and where did they go right in their assessments? You first. Uh. Well, I mean, uh, it's been quite distressing to read some of the, um, the, the reports in the press. Uh, one thing is that the, obviously they, nobody really knew him, but a lot of people sort of made out that they did. Um, also, the fact that I mean, he was a very private guy, um, but they got nearly all their facts wrong and that they missed out the point of, of what he was actually like in private, which was actually a very shy, gentle, mm. kind person. He wasn't the kind of persona that he put over on stage because, you know, he was an entertainer. And it, and it mm. makes his friends, I know the people who, who looked after him right mm. to the end, I mean, they all get very angry when, when they see the way that he's represented mm. in the English press, especially the tabloid press. Yes, I mean, we, we, it would be wrong of us not to say that, that he has been depicted in certain quarters as a sort of decadent, wild, bisexual, mm. irresponsible lover. Yes. So how, uh, what was actually the truth of that? Yes, that's very, that definitely makes us very angry because he was, certainly the Freddie we knew, wasn't wildly promiscuous, he wasn't consumed by drugs, any of these things that people are saying. He was, he had a very responsible attitude to everyone that he was close to and he was a very generous and caring person to all the people that came through his life. And more than that you can't ask really, you know, he, mm. as he moved from from a relationship to another one, he was always very, as I say, um, you know, aware of, of the effect he was having on people's lives. It's, is it a peculiarity that maybe his private nature contributed to some of the lurid epitaphs? In other words, the, the reality was, uh, mm. big showman on stage, but immensely private off stage. Is that mm. correct? That's right. Nobody really got inside the shell. And so lots of mm. the, the tabloids, I mean, it's just incredible. I read something in the mirror last week, which was uh, written by some poor old sick devil. Um, it's just so wrong. So they obviously made things up because they probably couldn't get inside. And for the last 18 months of his life, he was hounded by press outside his house. And we all have been up to a point. It's quite incredible in this country. But he really was a prisoner in his own house for the last 18 months of his life. Were there times years ago, because I mean you're familiar visitors here, both of you, when you'd liked him to have been more upfront and him to have answered interviews and maybe handled the press more? Would that have helped, do you think? Um, not necessarily. I, I think we didn't always agree, and there were times when we talked about it, but mm. Freddie was very much his own man. He made a decision very early on in his life that he was going to do things his way. And um, certainly we respected that. We all have our own ways, but within the, the group, you know, we respected that he was going to handle his own life, and certainly his own 
attitude to what he was suffering towards the end was his own business, you know. So in some senses we were gagged by that, which was hard for us, you know. You find yourself even not being able to talk about it to friends. Now that's kind of lifted, we can be very, very open about how we feel. It's interesting hearing you talking because, uh, Roger, you particular, particularly give the impression that none of you really knew him. He was, wasn't one of those people you really knew. I think, I mean, we were very, we were very close as a group. Mm. I mean, yeah. always, for 22 years, I, th I think. But it's, even we didn't really know, know a lot of things about Freddie, because he was quite a mystery. Mm. I tell you, we, we do feel absolutely bound to stick up for him, because he can't stick up for himself anymore, mm. so, you know. That's right. There's, there's no curb on people being able to say things about people once they've died. So there's very little yeah. curb on what they can do when they're alive in this country. And I think one of the things, a lot of people said, what can we do for Freddie? And I think one of the things would be to try and get these laws changed and, and make sure that people don't have to put up with, you know, perhaps, you know, if we could ensure that there's some kind of lobby to, uh, to bring in these um, protection of, of, of your private thoughts, Bill, you know, I forget what the, the proper word is. It's interesting that state facts can be protected mm. for um, periods of up to 25 to 50 years, mm -hmm. yeah. and yet as soon as somebody is buried, Mm. It's an open season. That's right. And there's no law to stop people disclosing parts of people's private lives when they're alive anyway. I mean, in France there is. Mm. You cannot publish details of, um, of, of somebody's private things without their consent. You come on because you're angry, basically. Not because you wanted to get up early and appear on breakfast television. You come on <laughs> because you're angry, yeah? Um, that, that's the main fuel, yeah? because we're angry. We, we also just... want to explain, really, what, what we feel that we can do now mm. with sort of Freddie's legacy in a way. You know, mm. we, we, and also, I think... That's right, there's a lot to say, really, because Freddie made one crucial decision before he died, which was to announce the fact that he did have AIDS, yes. which was a very brave and I think well-timed act on his part, because it gave us and those close to us a, a kind of weapon um, to talk about AIDS. You know, it would have been very easy for him to put on his death certificate pneumonia, you know, which he knew, and it could have perhaps sidestepped the whole thing. The fact that he announced it and said, look, I've got this, and... and and he was, there was no shame to that. I think it's very important because there shouldn't be from this point, or not from any point, any stigma to having this disease. It's nothing to do with, you know, somebody did something wrong, he's being punished. That's got to go. It has to go, you know. It's yeah. everybody's problem now. We're going to talk much more uh, later, fellas. I, I just mm. love one theory about what created that magnificent showman. Any, where did, was it the Persian background? Do you have any theories on... Uh, it's so what? difficult because he was so much <laughs> his own creation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He really was his own man in, in that sense. Uh, I, I really don't know. I mean, he, he's it's like const sporting or, or musical genius or after You wish you could yeah. distill it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. He's yeah. a one-off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Listen, fellas, we'll be chatting much more later, but for the moment, thank, thank you, you very much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks.